Uh, well, not really. I mean, according to the Constitution, uh, um, the president has uh, uh, very specific uh, and very well-defined uh, uh, roles and attributes. So I think uh, the president can actually exert uh, uh, sort of uh, soft uh, uh, powers, of, so to speak. Uh, and certainly in the case of Draghi, probably if there is a, if there is a transition government between now and uh, the next election, so basically one-year government, led by a prime minister which is a much which who might be a much weaker figure probably draghi will play a more much more important role but again it is about soft power it's not about the real power but there is a problem with the right, isn't there, Lorenzo? And without getting into too much of the detail as well, the Fratelli, um, if you combine them with Forza and you combine them with Lega, they could actually create a very strong block. And we know the strength in the polls of the likes uh, of Meloni and Fratelli and what have you. So is there a danger that if he does move up to the uh, presidential palace, as indeed you think is a good scenario, the politic politics below him could descend into chaos again? There is a risk. As I said, effectively, if he moves to the presidential palace, uh, it would be a crisis. So effectively, uh, the first job he would have to, to deal with is to replace him, appoint a new prime minister and a new government. This would take a, at least a few weeks, so the, some disruption. But more importantly, there is a risk that uh, if uh, the central right decides to withdraw uh, its support uh, to the government, uh, that would actually uh, produce uh, immediate uh, snap elections. And, uh, and again, uh, uh, this could be very disruptive, actually it would stop uh, policy making for uh, a few months, probably. So, um, and uh, as you said, the, the big question mark right now is uh, if the central right goes to power, it would be very much a central right led by the right. Uh, so led by Brothers of Italy and the League. And uh, we have seen in the past that, that these two parties have taken uh, anti-European stance, anti-European uh, positions, uh, and uh, um, they have, uh, uh, you know, a slightly different agenda compared to, uh, to many other parties in Italy. So I think the risk is indeed that you have a situation in which uh, financial markets, uh, global uh, observers, uh, are getting worried again about uh, uh, the the uh, the outlook for the Italian economy and the outlook for Italian politics. So I think something that you need uh, to to watch very carefully over the next few days. I think uh, mid January is the date, and uh, and uh, and I think it's a very important moment for Italy. Lorenzo, as you talk about market disruption potentially, uh, I just want to remind the audience what we've seen. I mean, despite very low interest rates in many years, there has been this sort of geopolitical risk premium in the pricing of uh, Italian bonds. But we've seen some of that disappear with Mario Draghi. Are you saying that returns and something we would have to watch out for? I think uh, uh, absolutely. I think, uh, again, uh, if Draghi moves to the presidential palace, 